Hi everyone, Jimmy Paddock here, and today I'm going to talk to you about Syringe. Released at the tail end of 2019 and officially becoming part of the Doom Classic Unity port in 2021, Syringe is a set of six levels for Doom 2, put together over a period of one metric infinity by a coalition of grizzled veteran mappers from Doom World. Walker Pavera Wright, Richard Tarnsman Fry, Michael Marchaic Fraze, and Zazer Zazer Acheron. All folks who've been on the scene for a good decade or more, churning out map after map after map for countless projects. From what the text file describes, the project had a bit of a long and troubled development history, it being an amalgamation of maps originating from the deceased project No End in Sight 2. And indeed, some of these maps allegedly date back to 2013. A joint effort by all four mappers was made to lift the bar of quality across the board, and Zazer was the one to coordinate their eventual unearthing and revival, dutifully putting these six maps together into a single discrete package of fast and furious maps, named of course after a sharp instrument, starting with the letter S. No, 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 not that one. Syringe is a set that's steeped in otherworldliness and disconnectivity. Visual theme-wise, it's pretty scattershot, although it's divided into three acts of two maps each, with only a loose thread of plot connecting all three locales, those being Hell, Brazil, and... Uh, something, I guess. Y you'll see when we cover it. That's not to say its disconnectedness is a weakness, necessarily. In fact, Syringe wears it proudly. There are a few sets out there that create a sense of weirdness and intrigue like it does. You'll power through its three acts pretty quickly, but every step of the way you'll be plunged ever deeper into its hellish unreality on your mission to revive a dying universe. The set also comes with an all-original MIDI soundtrack, and the mind behind the music this time is that of Maxime Tondreau, aka Psychedelic Eyeball. He's been a creative force of his own for a couple of decades now, and you may very well have heard his MIDI compositions featured in a number of Doom projects already. His contributions to Syringe are diverse and excellently constructed, span many genres and instrument sets, and primarily feature upfront his tendency for multi-layered, almost arcade-style synth work, and absolutely rockin' melodies packed with speed and power. Perfect for the modern Doom mod soundtrack. I'll now go into as much detail as I can about these six maps and their accompanying soundtrack. There's a lot I can say about all of these mappers, so I definitely want to give this handful of maps the overview it rightfully deserves. So therefore, as per usual, there will be spoilers ahead. Level 1, The Well. Syringe stirs awake with this distinctly creepy, off-putting opener, set in a dangerously populated valley of boiling blood. It's distinctly Ultimate Doom Episode 4 in appearance and gameplay, as there are already hefty crowds of low-tier monsters to cleave through, and surprise ambushes of heavier units to overcome, but it's made all the more sinister by the brickwork and cavern walls alike being smothered in sanguine red. A good half of Syringe's maps, the well being the first obviously, follow the formula of placing just enough rad suits for you to properly navigate the many basins of damaging liquid that are often unavoidable. Get used to preserving your precious suits and being smart with your shots, dilly-dallying will cost you quickly. Colouring the backdrop of Syringe's inaugural outing by Tarnsman, Zazer and Pavera is the first MIDI you'll hear from Psychedelic Eyeball. It's a spine-tingling, disjointed, Elfman-like offering, with pinprick pizzicato strings, shimmering shamisen, and trembling upper voices, and the melodic material veers violently between consonants and dissonance, made all the more ominous by its title, which I'm unsure if I can utter completely in one breath. Don't neglect the blur sphere here, when the shotgunner horde pulls out of the walls it might just save your bacon. Try to bait the full hardy archfile here into assassinating his army for you, then make with a red key and escape. Level 2, Hell Spoke. Nice pun, it's a spoke hub in hell, get it? This level prides itself on verticality and a highly non-linear progression, which makes sense since it's a map courtesy of Pavera. You shouldn't get stuck as long as you're diligent with your radiation suit usage and take keen mental notes of where the various locked doors are stationed. Parallels to Ultimate Doom's perfect hatred can arguably be drawn here. Throughout Hellspoke, your biggest foe will probably be the damaging lava that cakes just about every room, including the central hub, and if not that, it'll be the many opportunities that monsters have to cleverly potshot you from a distance, through fences or windows, or from elevated sniper platforms. You yourself must be ready to shoot plenty of switches in order to unlock essential parts of progression. If you don't, you could end up wandering and or running out of suits. Beyond the blue door is a highly hot-blooded encounter in this lava gully versus a squadron of Mancubi and an Archfile guarding the yellow key. Have your rocket launcher ready. 
I appreciate the thought put into making this red teleporter the one that takes you to the red door. Don't bother going through it until you have the SSG though, or you won't be able to safely cleave through all of the arachnatrons here. The MIDI by Psychedelic Eyeball here is a stormy driving track, full of triumphant keyboard synths that will feed your ears with all sorts of delicious intertwining melodies. Check out my second favourite in the set, Cryptic Dance. Be wary of the final stretch behind the red door, there's always more chain gunners than you think. You're finished with hell now, so that means you're going to... Level 3, The Undergrowth. I hope you're ready for a difficulty spike. Don't get used to the peace and quiet you start out in, The Undergrowth has all sorts of nail-biting tricks up its sleeve, courtesy of all three of its mappers, who each have their own brand of cruelty to show off. The watery caverns here are burgeoning with imps, revenants and chain gunners, and you really need to go foraging for supplies on Pistol Star. Tarnsman gives you only just barely enough ammo and health to survive in this chaotic central area, and grabbing the yellow key will earn you the ire of a squadron of cacos and pain elementals. To the south is a dimly lit forest area populated almost entirely by archfiles, which frankly feels like a brief respite compared to what came before it. If you have any degree of rhythm here, you'll trance the vials in virtually no time at all. The booby-trapped red key will teleport you into this bonkers fleshy mosh pit of imps that will have you sweating bullets, and then it's time to head to Zaza's area to the north with the red key in hand. Here the hills are alive with the sound of zombies bunched together in surprise cubbies. Then in this larger area, you absolutely need to pick off at least a few of the arachnatron on sentries, but not with rockets or plasma, or your life will be made miserable later on. This switch triggers the final big fight, which has the balls to dump you in an open space with half a dozen archer isles. This fight mandates masterful dodging ability and making sure every single shot counts. If a few spiders are alive, you might get lucky and get them to distract the vials, but there is already so much unpredictability to this fight that you basically have only your movement keys and RNGs to help you through. The MIDI Field Wandering by Psychedelic Eyeball is probably my top favourite in the whole set. It's pensive but heroic, slowly but surely, building and modulating over its runtime into an impossibly powerful crescendo. Make sure you put it through a halfway decent MIDI device for the full breadth of its brilliance. Level 4, Banana Export. Pavera's aggressive nature flows freely in this hot and dusty, vine-choked lava fortress. Don't even think about heading into the central hub or you'll get fried in the sun. The map is swarming with hit scanners and turret monsters of all varieties and has a cornucopia of Plutonia-esque evil traps that it'll try to spring on you. This might be the most carefully calibrated Pavera map in Syringe. He has been very deliberate with the item placement here. Every useful bit of kit is snugly tucked away in some unassuming corner you might never even think to look in. The rocket launcher here is vital for dealing with the chain gunner regiments you'll run into. Absolutely get the mega armor here and try to hold onto it as long as you can. A backpack can be procured from this ledge, and then there's the BFG accessed via this teleporter, which you'll absolutely need later on. A highly valuable red suit is tucked away in this underground passage. Then there's this single cell battery swimming in the lava here. If you don't think to go skinny dipping in the hot stuff to take care of the otherwise completely useless pinkies, then you'll absolutely be roasted when you find yourself with only one BFG shot to deal with all this nonsense. The blue key door is no better. I have no idea how I survived this onslaught. Past the yellow door, you'll need your BFG to properly deal with these cyber demons, but don't kill them yet. Leave them to infight once the cacos start flooding it, while you tightrope your way to some more supplies. After dealing with the cybers, you'll need to hit a couple of switches to finally leave this place. Psychedelic Eyeball's MIDI, titled Tune Swings, a bright and soaring techno-infused piece, goes some way to lifting your spirits in the face of all of this Pavera-style peril. Infiltrate the rocket ship, thwart the exit vial, and hit the button to launch yourself into Syringe's concluding act. Oh. 
Level 5, Blast Off. Pavera's final offering in Syringe is frankly an excellent send-off. A short but sharp bloodbath allowing us some much needed respite and unabashed destructive time in the fun zone. Just what we needed after the last couple of maps squeezed so much out of us. Blast Off is uh, rocket themed, obviously, and set inside a gloomy rustic moon base with highlights of brown and silver, giving us oodles of fodder monsters to send into the stratosphere. It's genuinely unclear to me if the total acreage of monsters in this map outweighs the rocket ammo pickups. If you run out of them in this map, I can categorically say you're doing it wrong. The only particularly tense encounter is this room with two archvals skulking about in this central pillbox, while you carefully have to pick off the hit scanners crawling up the stairs towards you. Both sets of foes here are equally deadly, especially if you're too happy to get close and personal. Psychedelic Eyeball's Hyperdrive gives us a neat backdrop of ripping saw bass, crunchy guitars, full-bodied synth choir, and some fantastically catchy top-line melodies to drive the carnage home. A more than ideal theme and name for a map that moves with such explosive ferocity. Level 6, Acheron's Needle. Good God. To say that Acheron's Needle is precarious is like saying the Grand Canyon is a slight bump in the road. To say that it's twisted and mind-bending is to say that the Enigma Cipher was a bit of a head-scratcher. To say that Acheron's Needle is a vanilla Doom map is like saying the works of MC Escher are some pretty fancy scribbles. Where do I even start? I suppose at the beginning. This map's starting hub is a location you'll visit up to four times interstitially throughout its runtime. Descending through the eye of the cosmically oversized needle sends you spiralling down into yet another catastrophically populated war zone of enemies, where the walls feel either too close for comfort or non-existent at all. Every step of the way throughout this level you get the feeling that things are breaking down around you, that something is deeply wrong with reality here, and that you're the lone antibody combating a viral hell plague that sent the universe itself into anaphylaxis. Those who dislike any amount of care being demanded of their manoeuvring will receive a disquieting shock to the system from Acheron's Needle, and indeed, even seasoned players might find themselves made weary by its confounding assortment of moving parts, jump puzzles, and outright dickish attacks on your well-being. Meanwhile, the shudder-inducing whistles and pulses of psychedelic eyeballs sordid death waltz of a midi, simply titled Recycle, are both gut-wrenching and nerve-jangling. While you're entranced by its unceasing synthetic wails, you feel like you're not simply balanced on a razor's edge while playing Acheron's Needle. You're teetering upon the cusp of oblivion. Zazer says in the text file that the map was fully item placed by Marchaic, which effectively saved it from certain death. I'm very glad that we got this map in the end. It is for sure one of the most brutal and beautiful vanilla compatible maps I've ever... Oh. Uh, ho hold on. Oh. H hang on, what? Oh shit! Level 7, A Bright New Future. Ah, <sighs> good morning, reality. That concludes my in-depth look at the levels. Let me close by saying that Syringe is something I think we dearly need more of. Map sets courtesy of small, closely knit teams of people are few and far between these days, thanks to what I'd certainly call a surfeit of community-wide mapping projects. And furthermore, the bog-standard Doom 2 theme progression, from tech to urban to hell, is something that's all too common these days, and it's refreshing to see the formula shaken up by Syringe. As a single map set, its ingenuity more than makes up for its brevity, although it has left me hungry for more like it. Give it a spin if this video has interested you. You can download it as an add-on for Bethesda's Doom Classic Unity port right now, or download it directly from the Doom World thread and run it with your favourite source port. I hope I provided an informative overview of what Syringe is. As usual, all the relevant links are in the description below. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. 
Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Doom Wed Overviews. If you like my work and want to throw me some support, please consider visiting my website, jamespaddockmusic.com, where you can commission me for work. Alternatively, you can join my Patreon. Becoming a backer means you get an early look at videos like this one, access to my private Discord, discounts on commission rates, and sneak peeks to exclusive content. That's everything for now. Cheers.